Kent State's Golden Flashes up next here in a Mac Football, a preview show on the ESPN Family and Networks. What in 2012 it was for then head coach Daryl Hazel, first bowl game in 40 years as they participated in the uh, GoDaddy.com Bowl East Division Champions, one ten in a row. The superlatives keep going on and on. And young man, you're going to see in a second, Dre Archer and Trayon Durham were one thousand yard rushers. Without further ado. We want to welcome in the uh, the new head coach, but not a stranger to Kent State football, <laughs> played for the Golden Flashes, Mr. Paul Haynes, who uh, comes from the University of Arkansas as an offensive coordinator and the aforementioned one of the one of the blurs of college football, the finest all-purpose uh, return player and offensive weapon in our minds, Dre Archer. Paul, let's start with you. So we did, the expectation level, I mean, right. is off the charts and yeah. through the roof. So here you go as a young head coach. You get a chance to get your first head coaching job, and here it is with a football team that won 11 football games and went to its first bowl in 40 years. Right. Talk about keeping the bar high. Yeah. Look what you're walking into. Yeah. How does that uh, <clears throat> process with you? You know, the, uh, that's, that's the fun part about it. When you have a, a program that the expectations are high, that's the, that's the pressure that you love, you know, as a, as a coach. So the thing that we got to sit there and focus on is not the end result, but the process. How do we get to that point? And, um, you know, me and Coach Hazel, of course, coach together. So that a lot of the philosophies in that foundation are the same. And I think that's been uh, good on our players. The consistency of what it was before uh, is still a lot of the same now. So we just got to make sure that we, we win every day and, and concentrate on the process, not the end result. You know, Coach, uh, in my opinion, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you. you on being Thank the new you. head coach. But more importantly, I want to congratulate you on your staff hirings to keep uh, Brian Rock, right. Brian Jordan, Dave McMichael, your right. special teams coach. Yeah. Uh, that was your best recruiting right. job, but that's a heck of a staff. And yeah. just talk about the thought process there. I, I think also when you look at that, um, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it, you know, and, and they won 11 games for a reason. And I think a lot of the, the times the assistant coaches get overlooked and me coming from that assistant coaches, you know, Ram, those guys did a great job last year. And with, we just talked about it, this is these, these guys, these fifth year seniors, third coach, and I yep. did the same thing. One of the hardest things is changing systems. And I didn't want to change systems. I wanted to, to make these guys comfortable and know that nothing was going to change. Um, so I think that's, you know, when you look at spring ball was easy for them. They just had to get to learn us. We had our highest GPA, you know, this last spring semester. I think that had a lot to do with it also, too. So, um, you know, everything that we sit there and we do, we, we do with them in mind and the players in mind. Paul Haynes, born and raised in Columbus, Ohio, so he, he knows the impact. As we said, you played for Kent State, right. so you walked down the program. You wound up playing with three head coaches. So with that, we, we asked Dree Archer. Dree, I mean, here it is. You're your third head coach in the program. Coming off the season as you had a year ago, how have all the guys taken hold of it in terms of having to absorb now um, yet, another, yet another head coach you change in the system? I mean, it's, it's definitely something different, you know. <clears throat> Got to get used to another guy. But, you know, we, uh, Coach Haynes, he came in in the spring. You know, we all connected well with him. You know, he's a great coach. You know, he brings a lot of energy to the team. You know, he connects well with all the players. So, you know, we're just ready for the 2013 season to jump off. Three All-American. I mean, that was incredible last year, the season you had. But to make the All-American team as a return specialist, uh, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot, but you know those those little awards. They were just like side awards for me. You know, not, they didn't mean, mean too much for me. You know, I just wanted uh, won the big the biggest one though, won the MAC championship. You know, won a bowl game. You know, we ended up coming short towards the end of the season. You know, but you know for the 2013 goals, you know that's one of my goals. Take a look at Dre Archer. You just saw him uh, in terms of on the offensive side, running reverses, 23 touchdowns. That a Kent State record from a year ago. Coach just mentioned about uh, the Walter Camp. All-American honor. So everybody's asking. They ask us all the time. You know, Dre Archer. What does he do for an encore? I mean, again, but I know you're the type of young man. It's not about you individually. It's about what you contribute to the football team. But have you thought about again having to come back and with the expectation levels on you, Dre, and and how you need to perform? And and what is that that drives you and motivates you to go above and beyond what you accomplished a year ago? No, just to, just to love the game. You know, I've been playing this game since I was six years old, and I, you know, I love it even more every year. So, you know, just love the game. 
<clears throat> but, you know, I love con contributing to the team, you know. I just got to exceed my play for next level, for next year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Coach, okay, defense. Mm -hmm. Six starters back. Right. Roosevelt next. Rosie next back is right. huge, former MAC Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, but depth-wise, you've mentioned that it's possible that some of these incoming freshman linebackers right. may have to play for you. Right. Where are you at there with your defense? Um, it, that's really the spot that's still an ongoing, you know, for us, and, and it yep. probably won't be decided until after camp, um, just because of the numbers of, of uh, the bodies that we, right. the, the lack of bodies that we have. So um, that's going to be a fun thing to sit there and, and see that thing develop and see who ends up, you know, at those spots. We also got to fill a a safety in a corner spot, you know, also too. So, uh, you know, but it starts up front. And when you have a guy like Rosie up front and you got some surrounding cast around him that has played a lot of football for him, you, you got a chance, um, you know. So we'll continue to, um, you know, sit there and build on that. But, you know, we have that foundation up front to, to build on. Coach mentioned Roosevelt Knicks, two time first team all MAC, defensive performer, freshman of the year. When you look at 15 sacks, always right. around the football. Right. Well, what? What? And he's not the biggest young man right. in the world. So, what is it about Roosevelt Nix in terms of the intangibles that makes him uh, year in and year out since he came on the Kent State program right. one of the top defensive players that we have in the MAC? I, I think the one thing that that he brings is that um, you know you talk that it factor. You know, he studies the game. Um, he picks up on things a lot faster than a lot of other guys. He has a you know, he'll come off to the sideline, you know, and, and just speaking with him and the other coaches and Brian George that he'll, he'll have an idea. You know, he'll have an idea of what they're trying to do. He'll listen to signals and do all those types of things. Um, you know, so when you see him making plays, you know, it, it's his quickness, it's his intelligence. It's, you know, we call it the FBI. It's, it's football intelligence. It's high. You know, so those are the things that he brings, plus also his leadership. You know, he's one of those guys that, you know, that people get better by playing him around him. Yeah, There's no doubt about it. You know, so um, it's fun to watch him play, and I'm excited for him this, this up, upcoming season. Dre, okay, I've got to ask this now. Every defensive coordinator at this conference, <laughs> every single one of them, when they break the huddle defensively, they want to know, okay, Where's number one? <laughs> right. where, where is he lined up this time? Is it wide receiver? Is it running back? Is it the slot back? And uh, buddy, they uh, that must uh, make you feel good. You get a lot of attention, don't you? Yeah, I, I definitely get a lot of attention. <clears throat> you know, but uh, that's their job. You know, that's what they get paid for. You know, to, to find their uh, the key players. But um, you know, later on in the season, you know, every every time I lined up, you know, I had defense linemen, corners, linebackers point me out everywhere I was at. It was it was definitely a different experience. Kent State football is in excellent hands with Paul Haynes. And, uh, Coach, we, we appreciate your time. We look forward to everything that uh, all of you accomplish once again. And we know, we know that you're all about now continuing to build right. on where the foundation has been set. So uh, outstanding success in 2013, and we'll see a lot during the course of the season. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bree Archer, continued you. success, young man. Thank you. Excellent stuff. All right, that's the Kent State football story. when we